time now. Now, how long do you think uh, you could go without using social media? There's no denying it's become a huge part of our lives, but some people claim it's actually bad for our health. The Royal Society for Public Health is calling for people to take part in a digital detox for the whole of September. We're going to talk to them in just a moment. And one woman who says social media is a force for good. First, let's see what some of you have to say. I use the social media every day, pretty much, really. Um, I use it for personal, keeping up with friends. I use it so much. I probably use it on a daily basis. Um, I use it because it's quite entertaining. I used to use it a lot a few years ago, but now I am going weeks without even logging on. My favourite apps would be like Twitter and Instagram. I'm not on Twitter. Well, I use Facebook. That's the social media I use. Yeah, I use Facebook. I use Snapchat the most. A social media detox will probably make me feel completely cut off. I don't feel like I'd be able to have any contact with my friends. I definitely feel like I could do it for a week. Maybe even kind of like start with a weekend, do it for a week, but not a month. I've done six months off Facebook, so that's no problem. I think so, but not everyone's like me, I don't know. Would you go for detox? Would you be able to kind of switch off? Probably. Okay, well, <laughs> I don't know. I'm not quite so sure about that, but I would love the idea. I could do it. It would be, I think it's a good idea. I'm not sure how long I could go without social media, you know. Join us now in the studio, Ed Morrow from the Royal Society of Public Health and Bex Lewis, a uh, lecturer in digital marketing at Manchester Metropolitan University. Very good morning to both of you. Morning. So uh, give us a sense of uh, what it is, what, what's the, the idea? The, you're not trying to polarise things, say it's good or bad. It's a question of sort of asking the question about how much do you need it and what does it feel like if you don't have it? Absolutely. So we've been looking at this issue for a couple of years now and there are a huge amount of positives for mental health and well-being that can come out of social media in terms of the networks you can build, the emotional support you can get. But we also know it's associated with a lot of exacerbation of existing mental health problems around anxiety and depression. Body image issues are a huge thing when people are kind of scrolling through constantly with feeds of perfectly curated lifestyles. So what we want to do with this month is say, right, give it up for a month. Or, you know, it doesn't have to be completely cold turkey. You can also try just giving it up at social events or just in the bedroom or just in the evenings, whatever works for you. Then at the end of the month, reflect back and think, OK, what are the elements that I don't miss, which made me feel bad? Can I cut those out? What are the elements actually which are useful? And how can I keep those and build a healthy relationship with social media? For me, it's also the amount of time you spend scrolling, looking at these apps. And this is slightly terrifying for me. I was given the stats for how long I've been spending on social media apps over the past past seven days, Instagram, five hours, Twitter, three and a half hours, WhatsApp, two and a half, Facebook, seven minutes. Is that a week? Do I Is have a problem? Week? That's in the last seven days. So that's about 10 hours in the last seven days. I think that's what worries me is we kind of frame the amount of time we spend online as problematic, whereas actually it's more about the quality of what we're doing online, and I think we agree on that actually, um, is that it's about what you're doing. So your job means you need to be up to date with things, so you probably are going and looking at all this kind of content. Um, and so, I mean, I grew up in a screen-free household as a child, we weren't allowed to tell you, um, and so I read a lot. Um, and I quite often think if you replace the, oh, I spent six hours on my phone with, oh, I spent six hours reading a book, everyone would think that would be, was a really good thing. But because it's on the screen, it's seen as problematic. Um, so I think it's thinking about how much, t not how much time, but actually what we're doing on, on there. And not, not necessarily in the kind of, uh, the 21st century, we've kind of said that everything has to be productive, every minute of time has to be kind of scheduled for something good. There's nothing wrong with just sat there and playing a bit of Candy Crush. If you're playing it for 10 hours, maybe you've got a problem. Um, but I mean, some people might argue because you're worrying about this too much. Because if you, if you take it back a generation uh, before hours, you know, people, for example, when you didn't have televisions at all, if you grew up in a house without televisions, if, if uh, a time before that, when the television first arrived, people were saying, it's going to be dreadful. It's going to overtake our lives, and lo and behold, you know, some people might say it has done, but uh, you know, they might say, well, it falls into place. You know, it, it takes its place. That's what's happening at the moment. It's just a process we're going through. It'll level out, and everything will be fine. 
I would suggest social media is maybe a bit of a different thing in the way it's so constantly available to us. Our phones are always in the pocket. There's always a way in which it can be getting in, in the way in other things in our life. And, you know, part of it's about the opportunity cost of, of right, what am I kind of missing out on while I'm doing this? Is this kind of uh, uh, lessening the quality of my interactions with people who are sort of with me at the time. Um, but just to say on the, the nature of the campaign itself, actually, work use, we're saying, you know, people, that's realistic, people have to do that, so that's fine. Things like WhatsApp as well, instant messaging, people need to be in contact. So specifically the social media platforms, your kind of Instagram, your Facebook, um, your Twitter, but we're asking people to, to quit. And that's your top tips for going cold turkey? Well, I wouldn't. I, wouldn't. Think, that, I think that's the wrong question. Um, so I, when I first heard about the campaign, I was like, here we go, another one which is saying that social media is bad, a bit like all the kind of Stoptober type things. Um, and actually, I do think you need to think about your habits. So maybe say, you know, I'm not, I'm going to try putting my phone down till nine o'clock in the morning. But I think we need to think a lot more about the positives. Um, so I've just finished cancer treatment, going online at three o'clock in the morning when you're high on chemo steroids and finding 10 other people who are all having the same treatment as you and being able to have that chat is amazing. I've done a lot of work with churches where people with disabilities are able to engage in a way that they couldn't otherwise. Can, yeah. can I just make the one thought, thinking about it now, I'm thinking that should, the people who most probably need to, to step away from it are the ones who are least likely to actually yeah. step away from it, aren't they? Um, I mean, in, the, in yeah. terms of who's going to be sitting here this morning going, mm, that's quite a good idea. The ones who most are on, the, they're, they're going to say, no way, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to get involved in your trial. That, that's why really this is only one half of the work we're doing on this issue. So a huge part of this is working with social media companies themselves and actually getting them to reshape the way the platforms work so that they're, they're less addictive, they're less compulsive, and actually Really, we want people's use of their social media to be intentional. It's conscious. You do it because you want to for a reason rather than because you find yourself falling down. Okay. That it, it's, it's a fascinating idea. Yeah. People will have their thoughts this morning and they can get in touch with us via social media. Yes, at BBC Breakfast. <laughs> Stay with us.